Hello and welcome to another update. In this one, I'll be covering the latest updates from the front line in Ukraine, starting out in the front line in Saporizhia. We see that the Ukrainian forces continue their attacks in the direction of Robotina as they continue their attempts at reaching the village and taking control of it throughout this uh, offensive they have managed to gain uh, a lot of territory towards it and they are now fighting by the very defensive lines that are at the outskirts of the village but they have so far been unable to push through and break through the russian defenses and reach the village itself and capturing the village so so far the fighting continues and if we see the positions map as well we can see that they are close to the first line of defense but they have yet to actually reach it and they are still fighting by the initial defenses right by Robotine and the positions ahead of the first line of defense, the first main line of defense, as there are proper defensive positions ahead of it, but the main line of defense, which is connected throughout the front line, is uh, located beyond that position, and it is much more fortified as they are actually looking to hold this uh, line as they don't want the Ukrainians to break through it, which would allow them to then go around it with a spearhead through the point they have broken through. In connection with these advances, we see this video here by the sun. A Russian tank engulfs in flames after direct hit by Ukrainian missiles near Zaporizhia. So if we take a look at the video, we can clearly see that this is a Ukrainian missile. And we can clearly see that this is a Russian tank. If we wait until it gets a bit closer, we can see that this is a Russian tank of the model of Leopard 2A6. It is clearly a NATO tank, I mean Russian tank, and this is a Ukrainian missile of the model Lancet drone, and it is clearly a, a Russian drone, I mean a Ukrainian a missile. So as we see, the sun, very reliable source, uh, showing a Ukrainian missile hitting a Russian tank of the variant Leopard 2A6 and the Ukrainian missile of variant Lancet drone. Back to the front line, we see some developments around Klishivka to the south of Bakhmut, where here fighting continues by the village of Klishivka. The Russian forces have been pushed out of the southern parts, and heavy fighting continues in this area, as well as to the northern parts, and fighting also continues by the village of Andreevka. There's been a lot of conflicting uh, reports of this area, but there's been no reports of territorial changes from either Remy Lind, Deep State Map, nor Syriac maps, so the territory stays the same. However, the information is very conflicting. There is this video by some pro-Russian sources where they claim that they are still holding on to Klishivka and these are troops walking around around the northern parts of Klishivka indicating that they still have control of it and they're even uh, pushing the Ukrainians away from it. Meanwhile, there are some pro-Ukrainian sources which claim that the Ukrainians are already inside the village of Klishivka. They're already cleaning up the village of Andrivka. So we have to wait and see until one of these three reliable sources report on the developing situation and come with the facts around what is happening. But we can determine based on a pro-Russian sources now corroborating the Syriac map update indicating the Ukrainian advances here to the south of Klishivka and west of Andreevka, as well as deep state map updating on the same thing. So Syriac maps, as I've been saying, is the most reliable source out there. They are sometimes late, they are sometimes the first to report on it. Either case, they are always, or most of the time, right. So these are the most reliable source I've used throughout the war. So the reasons why the Ukrainians are seeing so much success in this area in comparison to the northern flank, for example, is first off, the Russian supply lines to this area is kind of terrible due to the fact that they have to go through difficult roads to actually reach Klishivka. And even if they do, the Ukrainians are in close proximity to, the, to this area, so they can launch artillery strikes on these uh, supply lines. And finally, they also have the issue of it being essentially isolated from everywhere else. So the Ukrainian artillery is having a field trip, destroying all of the Russian supplies going to and from Klishivka. Meanwhile, the Ukrainians are not holding back in this area. They are essentially using everything they have. And at the same time, Remy Lind reports that the Russian Air Force is not nearly as active here as they are in other parts of the front line, which begs the question 
Why is that? Is it because they are far away from active airfields? Is it because there is bad supply? Does the Ukrainians have heavy air defense that prevents them from being active there? The question is not answered, but essentially the Ukrainians are uh, limiting the Russian advantages by attacking this part of the front line. And then meanwhile, we see that the geography itself is made for uh, Ukraine to be in an advantageous position. And with the importance of this village, the Russians have to completely continue sending reinforcements to this area, but they're not fighting a favorable battle at all. Moving on to the Luhansk front, here we see that the Russian forces are having major success as they've managed to advance both to the south of the current uh, bridge head across uh, the uh, river line here between the Russian positions and Ukrainian positions in the Luhansk front. But they've also managed to capture the villages of Serhivka, Nadia, and Novojehorivka. So the fighting has now reached Wordu Libove. Hello, 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 hello. And this is actually very in, uh, significant because this in this part of the front line is actually the last village between the Luhansk and Kharkiv borders. After this, if the Russian forces continue, it will be beyond the annexed regions and it would be definitely in the direction of uh, Borova, as I've mentioned in the previous video. So the Russian forces will need to attack the village of Pershutravneve here in this area, as well as the surrounding villages to gain uh, proper control and firm control over the road in between Svatove and uh, the uh, Borova area. And then we'll also see the Russian forces push southwestwards in the direction of uh, Proletarsk, as well as capture this road in between these two areas and then push westwards towards Borova. So the Russian forces may be looking towards an offensive in the direction of the village of Borova. Now, if we take a look at the topographic map, we can see here that the village of Svatove is here to the northeast. We then see the areas that the Russian forces have recently captured are located here and in the early high grounds. So essentially, the Russian forces have gets gotten a foothold by the high grounds across this uh, river line. And they are now uh, looking to attack the Ukrainian positions by the high ground located in these hills from an elevation of 180 to 200 meters and essentially this is one line of uh, high ground positions that the ukrainians have and the russians have reached the high ground positions to the east of these areas which means that the fighting will be taking uh, on leveled ground meanwhile the ukrainian forces uh, will most likely have some sort of defensive line here by this area but if the Russians break through this area here, they would essentially have free ground all the way towards Borova. So this is going to be the most important area for the Ukrainians to hold on to. If the Russians break through this, they would be able to reach the Oskol River line. So taking a look at this again, we can see that this area right here to the southwest of Svatove, and we can see the road goes straight from Svatove to this area. So the Russian forces have good supply for this offensive. They've already crossed the river line and they have a bridgehead across all of these areas. They've taken a foothold in the high ground and now they only need to break through this one defensive line of the Ukrainian forces and they would essentially reach Borova straight ahead after this. So this looks like some sort of Russian offensive in this direction. And as I've mentioned in a previous video, Borova is a significant target if the Russians are launching an offensive as it essentially splits up the whole Ukrainian position east of the Uskar river line as we see right here. There will be the northern parts, the southern part and the Russians can expand their offensive going either northwards, southwards or in both directions. And that is going to be all for this update. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. Make sure to help me out on Patreon or PayPal if you're willing to go the extra mile. And that is going to be all for this video. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.